Hello everyone and welcome! Today I am working in Rooms of Wonder and I've decided to go ahead and start a new page today. So I actually had my six year old pick a page and he picked this one with the little keyhole. So we're going to get started on this. And I think I'm going to have to do this in two goes but the video itself probably won't be super long but the process will definitely be a little bit longer so be warned. So let's get started. So I'm going to use my Faber-Castell Polychromos today and I've been going thinking of doing like a bluish cobalty kind of theme for this one with and I'm thinking for the flowers and things to go with like a salmon and maybe like cream tones as a nice contrast. They tend to work really well as a contrast to the cobalt so I'm hoping that will work well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just showing you like parts of this because obviously this is a mandala and it's the same all the way around. So whatever you see me doing here just do exactly the same all the way around each circle. So you can do a lot of sort of stopping and starting if you want to and at least that way we can cut down a little bit on the video timing and it won't be so long and tedious to watch me do absolutely everything. So I'm going in really really light. I've got a very sharp pencil and I'm just kind of tickling the paper a little bit. I'm not pushing down hard at all super 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 light as in you can see this is a darker color that I'm using but you can barely see it show up so that will tell you how lightly I'm coloring this. If you're finding it hard to go in with such light layers if you're finding that you're a little bit more heavy-handed and um, just a big tip is to practice holding your pencil a little bit higher up so towards the back of the pencil rather than the tip of it and that will just really force you to go in a whole lot lighter because if you go in too hard with that you're going to lose control so that's a good tip just hold it further back and practice being more light-handed it took me a while to to learn how to do that because i used to be much more heavy-handed but I'm having so much more control over my pictures by using these light layers on top of each other and building it up. So that's why I just keep plugging on about this one. Just go in light and you can always add more layers if you need to.
So my thought with these are that each of these little circles, I'm thinking that they're coming out from underneath the previous one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it darker towards the outside of each circle and then fade it lighter as we go further in. So as you can see, I'm just layering this color now. I'm still on the same color. I'm going to use this same color all the way in and doing the same thing. And I'm just sort of layering it on the outer edges of this circle that we're on now. And I'm going to then have the darker area just sort of where these flowers, that where that actual circle and the flowers overlap. I'm going to have that area there, the darker part sort of where I am at the moment and then going lighter in towards those leaves. I hope you're enjoying watching me today. If you are, I would love it if you'd take the time to give this video a thumbs up. It is the cheapest way and the most efficient way to support this channel and helping me bring this video out to a wider audience. And if you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content.
So I'm just going to get started now with these little flowers, the tiny little flowers. And I'm kind of going to go ahead and create a little line here, sort of in between each flower. I'm not going to go too far up. I started a little bit and faded up a little bit, but I ended up going in and doing a little bit more of a line, both here and the flowers on the next level in as well. I kind of did the same on those. Now, I just thought I'd let you know that even though I've gone back up to the top here, I am still working with that same color. I just ended up deciding that I wanted to do that blue up here as well and then fade it out a little bit. So we'll see what I'll do with the like complete background background behind everything. I don't know if I'll just leave it faded or if I'm going to add something to it. We'll see.
So I am finally changing colors and I'm going to go in with the Prussian blue and I'm just starting to darken things up just a little bit. I will still add more layers on top and darken it up even more, but I just want to give it like give it a bit of a head start and also fading this into that lighter layer of that bluish turquoise that we got underneath. Again, just go in really, really light and fade it out. Go as soon as you get closer to those that little tiny, those little tiny flowers, you're barely, barely touching the paper. The further down you get.
now here is where I'm really starting to make a distinct line and then so that's where my darkest area is and again I'm fading it out as I'm going down closer to the middle I'm not going too faded on this one I will probably add in another layer in there so I'm kind of going in a little bit rougher but it will get faded eventually So I'm just changing colors now to the Helio Turquoise and I am kind of overlapping a little bit now. So I'm going to go on top of that Prussian blue and then into the lighter area again, very, very light. Keep your pencil sharp. And actually one of the things you can do as well to keep that sharpness a little bit longer is that as you are coloring, keep rotating your pencil just slightly like a quarter of a turn um, every every few seconds and that will actually help you keep a bit of a point and more so so make sure you don't obviously color straight down like with the pencil in a 90 degree onto the paper if you're having it like in about above maybe 45 degree like I'm doing now that rotation is just going to help you keep that point longer and with the polychromos that's what you need to really get into the grooves of the paper in between that tooth.
Now for this outer circle, I ended up skipping that last color for that one and going straight to the deep cobalt green. I just wanted it even darker there and in that in getting that sort of that green, that more green tone in there. And just because we've got the leaves, so I just decided to go in with this one and I'm also thinking of using a little bit of this color maybe on the leaves as well just to kind of tie them in together. We'll see where we end up when we get to that point. So it will be a little bit of a while I think. We'll do all of these areas first and then we'll do start with the leaves I think.
So I'm really starting to add in some shadows now on this little back area. So I'm going in with my dark indigo now and I'm just really putting this in sort of underneath these leaves and just making sure that it's going to give us a nice contrast between that lighter areas and the sort of shaded areas and that will make that fade look a little bit nicer and it's also going to make our uh, leaves, our flowers and all of that stand out more and it will still give that really nice illusion of each of these circles sort of poking out from underneath the previous one.
All right, I was putting off this inner circle for a while. I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do with it, but I have decided to do it in my blue tones, but I'm going to get started with the Prussian blue first. And again, I'm having the <clears throat> darker colors on the outer area of the circle and then fading my way in. Now I am planning on having that um, keyhole kind of glow with some rays coming out of it, but I won't be doing that in this part. It'll probably be in part two. I'm hoping we can get away with just doing this in two parts. I don't like doing them crazy long. Um, usually I think you guys get sick of them after a while. So I just want to make sure that we don't drag this out any longer than we need to. But being a mandala as well, we can get away with some shorter videos on these because we only need to do a few, I only need to really show a few of them. So because it's the same the whole way around. So that makes it a little bit easier as well.
Now this color that's coming now is the light cobalt turquoise. You've still got the number on there, but the name has kind of faded away from a lot of use. So I'm just using this one again. I am not going all the way into that keyhole. I am leaving a tiny little bit of white there. I have a feeling I might end up going cream there. But at the moment, I'm just sticking with those blue tones and we'll finish off that keyhole when we're doing all the flowers and things like that in part two. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of some of the colors that we're going to use for the flowers on here. I'm just going to start out, I'm just doing this outer circle and then I'm going to do circle number four. So the ones that have I've got a lot of foliage. Uh, I'm just going in now with a cream. I'm adding a little bit of cream to some of these leaves as well, just on the tip, sort of over the top where sort of the highlighted areas are going to be and then we're going to obviously use our greens and our cobalt green later on and we're going to darken them up on the underside so hopefully by just putting in a little bit of that cream just on the tips here we'll give, get a little bit more of a highlighted area So one of the other colors I'm going to be using for the flowers is this salmon color. I really love how this one contrasts with that cobalt blue when you use them together. So it does make for a really nice effect. So I'm just adding in a little bit of this on this little top, tiny little buds here. And obviously it's going to be more obvious as we move in on these the other circle, the inner circles there that's got some larger flowers. Hopefully we can get some really nice effects. So I'm going to get started on the foliage and um, I'm going to do both this outer circle and that circle number four that's just got all foliage. I'm going to do the leaves of these exactly the same. So what you can do is just do each of these steps in both of those circles. I'll do that in a circle, that circle number four, um, after I've done all of these. So you'll get to see it in the final reveal. So I'm just starting now with the earth green yellowish. It's also one of those that I've used so much I've rubbed out the name of it, but that's the one I'm using.
So I'm going to go in now with the Juniper Green. I'm going to leave a bit of a highlight more so towards the top of each leaf and then have the dark area towards the inside of the circle. So as you can see there, pretty much like this all the way around. Obviously where there's any overlaps, I do put more shadows there. But we're also going to build up more using some darker colors as well. So don't worry too much. Just make sure you leave a little bit of a um, highlight. I'm going to go in now with the deep cobalt green and this is what's going to start bringing those leaves in and kind of oh, matching, <laughs> lack of a better word, with um, that sort of cobalt background that we've got. So it just sort of brings in a little bit more blue to our leaves and uh, just makes it go together really nicely and we do still have um, like that yellow undertone as well in the earth green yellowish 
Um, I did end up after doing the next step adding in some more of that earth green yellowish but I did forget to film that but I'll let you know when to go in and do those. All right, it's time for some serious shading. I'm gonna use my dark indigo here and I'm also, I'm going both on the leaves and on the background here. So I'm not gonna to bother too much if I end up going kind of outside of the lines. I started out going out really neatly and then I just decided to just go for it and not bother too much if I went on the outside because I wanted more shadows underneath these leaves anyway. So as you can see now I'm starting to go underneath the leaves so just to get a little bit more darkness out there and having that almost a shadow part of the leaf kind of blending in with that background a little bit more and it just I kind of make kind of looks a little bit more I don't know natural out of a lack of a better word it's not obviously I'm not going realism with this one but it just makes a little bit more sense when that dark area is like really dark and you have some nice contrasts
So I'm just going in now with my Caran d'Ache colorless blender pencil. So this isn't the full blender, it's just the one that's in the pencil shape. And I just went ahead and I just blended each of these blue areas and I also blended a bit on the leaves as well. Once I'd done this, I ended up going over these leaves again with the earth green yellowish, which you'll see, um, you'll see that they're a little bit more of that brighter yellowy green tone when that final reveal comes. You don't have to do anything particular with that earth green yellowish, just go over the entire leaf. So as you can see when I'm using this blender pencil, it's even those light, light, light areas are coming out a little bit brighter. So this is a great way of reducing the amount of layers you need to do because you can then yeah, go in quite light and you'll still be able to see your colors. You can still, if you don't go too hard with a blender pencil, you'll still be able to add more layers on top of it. So don't go ahead and burnish the page. Just leave it so that you're still able to add more layers if you need to. And here is where I'm now up to so you can see the leaves are a little bit more yellow there and I've done that circle at number four as well so we're gonna leave this piece at where we are at at the moment and then we'll come back in part two and we're gonna do all of the flowers and that keyhole and hopefully we can have a bit of a play with maybe some acry white acrylic paint I'm thinking we'll see so thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you being here. Have a colorful day and I will see you again next time.